Hey, what's up guys? My name is John Monroe. I do car reviews and truck reviews on the channel. I have a really exciting video for you today. I was really pumped. I thought I was going to review a Jeep Rubicon uh, with uh, Jeff D'Ambrosio Auto Group and they actually hooked me up with the Jeep Mojave Edition. those of you who don't know is a lot like the Rubicon but is more so rated for uh, desert and uh, sand trail running uh, kind of similar to like a Ford Raptor type suspension so that's the main difference um, I'm really excited about this truck um, and I, I just hopped in it I like to give you my initial impressions when I hop in a car and my initial impressions when I hop in this car I gotta say is impressive I mean it's I, I said wow to myself I haven't been in a newer Rubicon or a newer uh, Mojave obviously and I gotta say that like all the interior touch points are really nice. I'm impressed there. FCA has been doing a great job with their interiors lately. Things feel comfortable. They, they feel well made. The buttons and knobs seem logical uh, and things like that. Um, I will say it's a little tighter than I thought it was gonna be. Uh, I've done a lot of uh, reviews of big pickup trucks lately. And obviously the Jeep is not a big pickup truck, um, but it's definitely a little bit uh, smaller inside than, than I thought that the Jeeps were gonna be. I haven't been in a new Jeep in a while, so I don't have a ton to compare that to in terms of how it compares to previous Jeeps. Um, but it's not, you know, it's not cramped. It's just not obviously a giant pickup truck. So just keep that in mind. I know a lot of people consider getting a pickup truck or a Jeep, and this is kind of the in-between where it's the Jeep, the 2020 Jeep Gladiator Mojave. Um, so just wanted to, to call that out. All right, cool. So now let's do my initial impression driving it. Like I said, everything looks pretty nice on the inside. A little tight, but you know, you do have storage. It's not bad. Things like that aren't bad. The glove uh, center console, uh, but yeah, the center console is you know kind of wide enough, not too bad. But uh, let's put her in a drive and see how it feels. First thing I noticed, the transmission felt smooth when it shifted. Um, let me just set my mirror real quick. And uh, yeah, let's take her for a drive. Let's see what this Jeep Mojave is about. Suspension feels cool. Got guys on the dealership giving me a thumbs up. They're like, yeah, man, that Jeep Mojave is sick. <laughs> It is pretty sick. I gotta say, your, my, my initial reaction, I just saw this for the first time. Pulling up to the Jeep Mojave, I mean, it's it's a cool looking truck. So the difference between the Mojave and the Rubicon is that the Jeep Mojave has a slightly different Fox suspension setup. It's got two and a half inch double bypass shocks with an external reservoir, um, a piggyback reservoir as well. So that's a pretty cool uh, aspect to it. You'll see kind of a separate reservoir up further under the front bumper, in addition to the shocks on the actual you know, strut itself. Um, so that's pretty cool. And, and it also sits a little bit higher. And I gotta say the ride is really smooth. I haven't gotten it out yet or moved around really too much in it. Um, but I gotta say it feels more planted than I really thought it was going to. I've been driving a lot of pickup trucks lately. And this thing honestly like feels really planted and is not bad to drive. I like how it's sitting. Um, it feels, it also feels easy to drive. The steering feels like it's pretty accurate. Not like, you know, not all over the place, pretty tight, kind of what I would want. Um, it's got this, this uh, six cylinder Pentastar, the Jeep Pentastar that everybody's used to. Pentastar feels pretty good. I mean, in the Jeep, it's not like totally underpowered in the Jeep, but it is not like a really powerful engine. I would have liked to have seen them put a Hemi or something like that in the Mojave. Um, so the first thing I'm noticing when I'm driving it on the road is that it definitely feels different than a regular car suspension. I mean, you can feel just a little bit more movement and play in the steering wheel, but I gotta tell you, it's not bad. For what this thing is capable of, it's it's not something that I would even be concerned about. I mean, it's very, very nice. So going over bumps feels really good. The suspension actually feels like a really nice, you know, uh, I don't wanna say luxury car suspension, but like it, it feels really luxury. The suspension feels really, really good. I definitely like the suspension a lot, and you can definitely notice a difference. Um, I'll drive a regular Rubicon as well, and we'll see like what the difference is between the two. Uh, the brake feel is pretty good, very responsive. I actually I like it a lot compared to some of the other cars I've been driving. The brake feel feels really nice. Stops pretty good. Um, and so back to the kind of the difference between this and the Rubicon. This is a there's two and a half inch Fox shocks on this, two inch Fox shocks on the Rubicon, um, and this has a little bit of a lift. Uh, the other difference is that this doesn't have a front locker. That's like really the only difference though between this and the Rubicon. There's not much else. Um, I'm sure I forgot something. This has like some sort of like bump stop in the actual shock that I'll show you later. Uh, and that's one of the differences, but you know, that, that's pretty cool. It's like one of the first cars to ever have this special type of bump stop on a shock. It's like a hydraulic bump stop or something like that. I don't know. It's pretty cool. Um, 
but yeah, I mean, it definitely, definitely has a good ride. I mean, I'm, I'm shocked. I thought I haven't spent much time in a Jeep and this Jeep Gladiator, like it feels good, man. It feels planted. It feels comfortable. It's, it's definitely a comfortable car. Like I could, I could see myself taking this on a long trip and I'm actually looking for a car for a cross country road trip right now. So I really don't know what I'm going to end up getting, but getting, but we know this, this Pentastar motor is, uh, is pretty darn reliable. Um, so other than that though, in terms of driving it, my visibility is pretty good. Uh, let me just kind of swerve back and forth here. Let's feel the steering feel. It gets like some nice little body roll, but it feels pretty sorted, man. Like doing a little bit of swerving, like it feels good. Honestly, I, I drove a Raptor last night actually. So I have a pretty recent comparison to the Raptor. And I will say this suspension, I mean, this, this truck is designed to like semi compete with the Raptor. It's like in that same like desert runner class. It's not designed to compete because it doesn't have a big motor, but um, you know, it's in that class where it's gonna, it might pull and it's cheaper and it might pull some buyers from the Raptor who don't want the high performance, but still want the desert running capabilities because not everybody running through the desert needs to have a motor that's, you know, pushing 450 horsepower. And I got to tell you that Raptor motor that I drove, it was, you know, I drove a 2019 last night. It was the 3.5 liter twin turbo, 450 horsepower, whatever it is. Um, it was not that fast, man. It really was not that fast. I was underwhelmed, like surprisingly underwhelmed by how fast the Raptor was and how powerful it felt. I, honestly, I thought the motor was like kind of a kind of a dog. Like it really wasn't that great. I don't know what everybody's raving about with these EcoBoost motors, but the, I think the V8s feel way better. I drove a V8 the week before, so I've had them all back to back to back. And dude, the V8, like it, having a naturally aspirated motor just feels better unless you're in like a little turboed car where it rips. But in that truck, I really didn't think it was that impressive. I gotta say, it wasn't. It wasn't bad. Like I'm not trying to say it was terrible. I, you know, I'm gonna get a bunch of crap in the comments for that, but like. It was not nearly as good as a V8, like, and it was really underwhelming, I gotta say. I mean, I thought a Raptor was gonna throw me back. Um, but anyway, so, so yeah, this competes with the Raptor in the sense that it has that similar type of high-speed geared shock. Uh, so you're, you're geared to basically be able to have a lot of different suspension play happening as you're running at high speeds for a long period of time. And that's why you have so many reservoirs in the shock. Uh, shocks heat up as the more you move a shock up and down, the friction of the actual hydraulic fluid in the shock heats up. And that's why they add all these special shocks to these off-road trucks because they typically deal with more suspension play than a typical truck would. Um, so that's just one reason why they did it. And it definitely makes a difference going over bumps. I mean, this thing does glide across bumps. The whole chassis stays level while I'm going over different bumps, which is which is pretty cool. Um, definitely not bad. And I gotta say this truck looks badass. My initial impression, again, back to the initial impression when I walked up to it, it looked badass. It's definitely, I think it's cooler looking than the Rubicon because those shocks on the front look really, really mean. I love the Mojave look. Uh, the color I'm in, I think is this like, Gobi desert color or something like that. Let's see what we got here. Now this is the Gator clear coat paint. So this this color is called Gator. Very interesting. You'll see this is the window sticker. All right, we'll put that in the back for now. Traffic's moving a little bit. But let's keep driving this. The, the gear knob has this like giant red thing on it, which is pretty cool that you press. Um, I'll try one of these Jeep windows put down the window a little bit. The windows and Jeeps are like at a good spot for your arm. You can like hang your arm out real good, which like, that's what a Jeep's all about. Just hanging your arm out the window and driving around, right? Put the window back up. It does have the auto stop start feature. Uh, so when I pulled up to the stoplight, it did stop on me. Um, it doesn't have a glasses holder. I like to play the glasses holder game. That is my test. I know everybody's got their own little car test that they do. It doesn't have a glasses holder. I love cars that have the glasses holder right there because I always drop my glasses. My glasses are always flying all around when I'm driving in cars. It's got some little storage down here, nothing crazy. I'll show you more of the interior later. Um, but right now, let's stick to the driving review. All right, so a couple things that I noticed while I'm driving is that the AC is pretty ice cold. I like that. I can see my temperature up front in my gauge cluster. The gauge cluster seems to have the info that I need. The steering wheel is nice and wide. I like that. I mean, that reminds me of the Raptor. The Raptor has that race steering wheel. There's a little bit more bolstering on the seats, which is kind of cool. Um, and as I'm driving it and getting like some speed. So it's not fast. It's, your, it's a typical Jeep. It's not fast at all, um, but it makes a good noise when you get on it. That six cylinder sounds pretty good. Nothing, nothing wrong with that six cylinder. But it's, yeah, it's really just, it's not a fast car. It takes turns. It takes turns really well. I gotta say, it definitely feels 
really good. I wouldn't say it feels underpowered at all and it takes turns well. So let's take it on some twisties back here. I'll take it at a little bit of a higher speed, but let's let's see how it does in these back rows now that we got this slow old lady out of the way. Let's just see here. Body roll is a little bit, but not too bad. It's not as planted as like a Raptor, but it's still pretty planted for a Jeep also. It moves pretty good. Suspension feels pretty good. Honestly, it's gliding across all these bumps. Like it's doing better than I really, better than I expected. It's definitely a, a fun car to drive. I think this is something that has a lot of character that you probably like driving every day. Now right, we got a tight turn coming up. Let's plan it. Go. A lot of, a lot of roll, but it, it hung in there and stuck it pretty good. All right. You felt the back, I felt the back end kind of tip and I was like, uh oh. <laughs> but uh, no, not bad, not bad. It's, I mean, it's, it's a Jeep. It's not, not designed to go fast on the road, but it's definitely, you can tell this suspension is geared more towards higher speed activity, um, which is cool. I definitely like that a lot. The other thing that I noticed with the Jeep is that the windshield is like straight down in front of you, which I, and it's like small, which I don't know if I like or I hate. I'm not really sure. It's kind of cool. Like Jeeps just have a cool feel. I haven't spent a lot of time in Jeeps, so this is like a really fun experience for me. Um, and if you haven't bought a Jeep, I'm trying to like give you that feel of what it, what it kind of feels like to drive one and, and have one for the day. Um, yeah, really cool. Honestly, more fun than I thought. It, my, my one thing with the Jeep is that it feels like I like, I like big pickup trucks where I have a lot of room. And again, it's not small, but it, it definitely feels, you know, smaller than I'm used to. Um, so that's just one thing to consider if you want a big car, but there's plenty of room and you have that whole bed in the back. So it's like, and that's kind of what's cool about the Gladiator is that Jeeps in the past have kind of been, uh, you know, a car that, that didn't have a ton of storage unless you got the four door. But this one has the entire back pickup bed. So you can put a lot of stuff back there and then it frees up your back seat. I didn't think the back seat was all that cramped. The brakes are good. I'll say the brakes are really good. I definitely like the brakes. Got a lot of positive, a lot of positive feel in the brakes. I have no idea where I am right now, but in the middle of a field somewhere, which is pretty cool. I'm going to pull into this field. We're going to do some cool stuff with this. It's a state park. We're going to do some cool shots with this Jeep in the grass. I'm excited. The backup camera is crystal clear. That's one of the clearest backup cameras I've ever seen. Well, for those of you who don't own Jeeps, I was just messing around with the four high, four low system. And uh, a little tricky, you gotta put it into neutral and put your foot on the brake to shift it. Um, but that's just something to keep in mind if you have a Jeep or you've had Jeeps in the past, you probably already know that. Um, yeah, so not, not too big of an issue there. But I gotta say, I really love driving it. The suspension's really good. I took it off road a little bit. I'll, t I'll do some shots of that in just a little bit once I find a good place to do that. Um, but I gotta say, like, Suspension's really good. Going around turns, I got another good turn here, going about 40. Truck leans, like it, it rolls, but it, then it like catches that spot on the shock where it just holds, which is cool. Um, definitely pretty neat. I took it off road back there a little bit in the state park, just kind of, you know, over like some small bumps and it did a really good job. It felt really cool, which you know, what you would expect from a Jeep. Um, so I gotta say like drivability, if, if this was a daily driver, would I want to drive it? I mean, yeah, maybe. It's definitely pretty comfortable. And if you're not that concerned about lots of space and you like to have fun on the weekends, throw stuff in the back, uh, you know, maybe like throw dirt bikes or pull a little trailer, you could do that. I don't think the towing and payload is that high on this. Um, I'm not sure what it's rated for. We'll check that in a little bit. But uh, yeah, just, just something to keep in mind. Um, but again, the cabin, not super loud. Like I, I like the cabin quite a bit. It does good engine braking as you go down hills, which is pretty cool. Um, and yeah, I just got to say that like, the drivability feels much better for a Jeep than I thought it was going to. I'm not a big Jeep driver, but this thing feels like, you know, it could really, you know, it, I wouldn't even know I was driving a Jeep. I feel like I've heard horror stories about how bad Jeeps are to drive, but this thing's nice, man. I really, really like it. Like I'm enjoying it. Torque's pretty good. That little six cylinder goes when you need it. That's, that's flat out. I mean, it's not, it's not crazy fast. I'm doing like 45 and it's making a lot of noise, but yeah, it's, it's fun to drive. Definitely fun to drive. Pretty cool. Um, 
I'm gonna keep going here, not too sure where I am, but I'm gonna keep testing this Jeep out for you. Again, I'm just impressed by these shocks in the corners. I mean, really, really, really impressive. Uh, the AC is still cold. I say that, I'll say the infotainment in this one is a little small, but it's not bad. I'm not really a big infotainment guy in cars. I don't really care. I don't know about you guys, but I really don't care that much about the infotainment in cars. I use Apple CarPlay. As long as it's got Apple CarPlay, I'm cool. I'm good to go. Um, the seats feel really comfortable. No problems there. They do have an interesting little pull lever on the side that you got to pull um, to change the height of your seat, which currently I can't find. And I would like to change the height of my seat. See, that's kind of uh, little things like that annoy me. Ugh. Mother. All right, well, whatever. I can't find it, so I'm not gonna be able to change the height of my seat, but it's, it's fine, it's good. Um, but yeah, in terms of like, would I buy one of these? I think I would absolutely buy one of these. I, I honestly was like, I've been having this conversation with myself the whole time while I'm in it. I'm thinking like, do I want one? I'm, I'm looking at buying either a Toyota Tundra TRD Pro or something else. I'm taking a trip cross country, and I gotta say, this suspension, surprisingly, is one of the best suspensions that I've felt in all the cars that I've driven. It's very comfortable. I love, love, love how it feels, just like eating up these bumps. And I know it's designed for desert racing, but I gotta say it feels pretty damn good on the road, which is a huge plus because that's where most uh, car buyers are gonna use their cars anyway. Um, so yeah, this is a really cool thing that Jeep did this, and I'm, I'm running it pretty good right now, and it feels, it feels great. Uh, in terms of cabin noise, it's not the quietest cabin, but I gotta say, like, I think it's quieter than the Tundra TRD Pro. I think it's a little quieter than that, just in terms of how it feels, especially for having like this, you know, this roof, I would have expected it to be louder. It feels like everything on it has been well made. I've heard people say Jeep's like slack on the interior, and I would disagree with that. I'll say this, this interior is pretty damn good. Um, cool. All right, guys, so let's jump outside the car. I'm going to give you a quick review of the exterior. I'm going to go under the hood, and we'll do a talk a little bit more about the interior and some of the engine options and things like that. All right, so let's get into that now. I think I will say the gauge cluster is pretty nice. Just a little stop start here, turn it off. Sounds pretty good. Um, you have this infotainment over here, which I think feels pretty quick to respond. Get your climate stuff. Got a max AC button, you know, we love that. Definitely good turn this down a little bit so we can actually hear each other you got your apps heated steering wheel you got your heated wheel heated seat backup camera you can hit that anytime um, things like that I think it does have Apple CarPlay it also has all your knobs down here you got your power outlets um, you don't have a 12 volt power adapter but you do have USB USB-C aux and all your windows in the middle like a traditional Jeep Got all your uh, gear shifters down here. The seats, the seats look pretty nice. I mean, this leather is like a really nice padded leather. Um, I definitely really like it. The headrests are nice. Everything is pretty comfortable. This is what the roof looks like from the interior. Um, so yeah, there's not a ton going on in the Jeep interior, but they just, you know, and that's Jeeps, you know, how they just typically do it, but it feels really nice. Everything is, like, I like all this orange stitching and stuff like that on the Mojave. The wheel looks like it's high quality. Everything just feels high quality. Um, the sound system sounds pretty good. Didn't know Lamb of God was on. Let's crank that damn AC and let's get out and I'll show you around the truck. All right. All right, so stepping out of the truck, it's a high step. I gotta tell you, it's definitely a high step. Um, I should probably grab the key so I don't get locked out. Got the key in my pocket. It's in my pocket, nice. Don't wanna test a dealer's car and get locked out. Uh, once again, guys, by the way, this is a car from Jeff D'Ambrosio Auto Group. Um, Jeff D'Ambrosio runs a dealership in Downingtown uh, with him and his son. They're really great people. They were uh, kind enough to allow me to review a lot of cars in their lot, and I'll keep doing more with them. Uh, but if you guys are looking for a Jeep or a Ram or any sort of, you know, Challenger or Charger in the area, I would highly, highly recommend checking them out. I think they also expanded into Chevy recently as well. Um, but they're really great people, and I would check out that dealership if you are in the Philadelphia area looking for a car. Um, but yeah, so the Jeep is high to jump out of. You have these steel running boards here, which I think are designed to stop you from scraping on rocks, which is pretty cool. Definitely like that. Um, let's do a quick, get a quick look underneath. 
Everything looks to be pretty well made underneath. Not a lot of plastic. I know a lot of cars these days, like the F-150 <clears throat> has a plastic oil pan, which drives me nuts. I can't believe Ford did that. Um, but the, the everything on this car feels really well made. The the uh, the fender flares are like really really sturdy, even though they're plastic. Um, those Fox double bypass shocks. I mean, come on, who does not like to see those? Those things are bad ass. Like sitting from the side, when you look at the car, the fact that you can you know see them just looks so cool. I love it so much. You also have this cool little trail rated. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Not trail rated. You have this desert rated. Uh, certification there from Jeep and this is something that is new to Jeep uh, for the Mojave edition Jeep has never had this desert rated vehicle before which is really cool which and really what it means is that it has these like uh, like I mentioned before the Fox double bypass shocks but they're wa they're wider they're two and a half inch instead of two inch as they are on the Rubicon um, and then they also have a third reservoir so they're, they're, they're uh, double bypass shocks so they have like a little ha reservoir that hangs on the shock and there's another reservoir that sits up under the front bumper that actually is an overflow reservoir basically for when things get really really hot if you're run doing des desert running um, you have additional fluid in the shock to keep things cool and it actually is away from the shock so the heat can kind of dissipate and cool down as it flows between all three reservoirs you have for the shock which is really really neat and I'll show you that right now so this right here is the other reservoir that's the front reservoir and then here are the actual shocks that you have in there okay there's the shock and then you have this like tube that runs from the shock all the way down to that front reservoir there so that's pretty cool all right and you have this mojave sticker right here which is also really badass i really do like that as well um and i'll just say as a whole Guys, being a YouTuber is not easy. My audio just fell off the top of my camera unexpectedly. Mayday, mayday, Uncle Sam. Oh, all right, cool. So what was I saying? I don't even remember. Oh, the, the perception of this vehicle from the outside, guys, is really cool. I mean, honestly, this color, I can't remember what it was called, some desert thing, I don't know. It's like this like, like grayish green color. I really do like it. It looks really badass. Um, the truck just looks really good. I like the way the hood scoops are. I mean, the Rubicons look cool, but I think that lift that the Mojave provides is definitely, definitely good. I will also say that the front headlights, these front headlights are really badass. The front headlights are really, really like they stand out. One of the first things that I saw when I walked up to the car was these headlights. I mean, they look really, really cool. Um, LEDs all around. The tires that it comes with, I don't know if they're 30, 35 inch, not really sure, but uh, if they're big enough, let's just say that, they're not super noisy. Honestly, for what they are, I thought they were gonna be way, way, way noisier. Um, so I'm pleasantly surprised by how noisy they are not, which is pretty cool. Um, all right, let's pop the hood on this beast. When it comes to Jeep, I will say there are things that you have to know. So trying to figure out how to get the hood off of a Jeep, I, I, you know, I know a lot of people are gonna be like, well, you don't know that, but like, yeah, dude, I've never had a Jeep. So. A lot of people haven't had a Jeep and they want to buy their first one. These latches are something you got to learn. I mean, honestly, popping the hood off, it's not hard, but like that got, got, got caught on me and I couldn't get, the, uh, couldn't get the hood up and I was like, what the hell? So you just got to push down. You just got to push down a little bit on the hood and basically release the tension. And that comes right up like that. And then your hood's up. All right, we got the hood up. That latch was a little bit difficult, a little old school. Got the old school prop here on the hood, no hydraulic hood dampers, which is not a big deal, just something to note. Here's that 3.6 liter Pentastar motor that Jeep has had for quite a long time. It's a solid tried and true motor, man. This motor rocks on and on and on. and doesn't really have a ton of issues. It'll be reliable for you. Um, just something to note about the Jeep. I don't think they offer this Mojave in another engine power plant. I'm not sure, I know they have the uh a bunch of different en engine options but i would probably still stick with the all motor i love all motor motors um or i would maybe consider an eco diesel i don't know if they have an eco diesel in this actual lineup but i think you can get an eco diesel in the jeeps uh just something to actually i don't know about that i'm not sure i gotta check on that but i would still regardless i would go with the 3.6 liter pentastar because it is a tried and true motor and i think reliability trumps everything when it comes to a lot of stuff like that all right so real quick let's also just hop in the back seat check that out it is a little bit of a step getting in and out of the jeep 
keep that noted. Uh, the back seat, I mean, I got, I'm again, making it my workspace for the day. My girlfriend likes to make fun of me when I say that. She thinks it's hilarious. And uh, let's check out what we got here in terms of storage. So this, I think that's like a soft top or something that they included back there. I'm not really sure what that is. I'm not gonna open it up because it's a new car. Um, but we got a lot of, we got a lot of storage under there in terms of like there's a box under the seats. I will say that like the pickup trucks, I like, the storage is cool. It's cool to have storage back here. But I will say that the pickup trucks have like this giant sliding back area. So in terms of this like being compromised between a pickup truck and a Jeep, I'd say it meets that well. I would say it's not going to totally replace, you know, what you're going to do with a pickup truck, obviously, just, just because it's a little smaller. Um, let's hop up in the bed real quick and check this out. Soft damper bed? I don't know. One, two, three. Soft damper bed. All right. Let's hop up there and see what we got going on. Oh, try not to rip my pants. All right. So this is the bed. A couple things I had immediate impressions about the bed. Uh, it's reduced. It's smaller. It's got a little bit smaller uh, side rails there. Um, that manual, that rear window is manually sliding. Uh, but I will say, that, like, it's big enough. You could fit bikes back here. You could fit maybe like one dirt bike if you tied it down. I don't know if I would. You could, I'm sure you could do it. I've seen Jeep do it in the in the uh, in the reviews, like online on the on the promo videos. But like the bed walls are definitely like shorter than a typical tip pickup bed. Uh, so that's something to keep in mind but it's a good usable bed for what you're getting and for how capable it is off-road because um, i will say like the suspension and, and the wheels feel really cool uh more so than a, than a typical pickup truck like an off-road trd pro or something like that i like these orange tow hooks back here too very cool overall the styling of this vehicle is sweet all around definitely gotta love it so in terms of which jeep would i buy which jeep should you buy i would probably buy this jeep i, I seriously probably would if i was buying a jeep I'd probably get a Mojave. I gotta drive a Rubicon, but the Mojave suspension, I think is gonna trump everything for me. I know it doesn't have a front locker. Honestly, I don't rock crawl enough to care. And this thing's gonna be way more capable and four high than you need it to be. So honestly, you'll be good no matter what you're doing, unless you're like a hardcore rock crawler. Um, in terms of a daily driver that's really good off-road, this would be a great truck. Uh, it's definitely, definitely something that I like with the pickup bed, the combo of like the Jeep with the pickup bed is pretty cool. And I think this one looks pretty good. I mean, I, I, don't, I wasn't sure if I was crazy about that, but I will say that this one definitely looks pretty damn good uh, with, the, with the pickup bed. It doesn't look that bad. So I would definitely buy one of these if I was buying a Jeep. I'd be between this and a Rubicon, um, but you know, you'll know you kind of drive it and make that decision on your own. But I love that suspension on the road. It feels really planted, a lot like a Raptor when you go through turns, which is pretty cool that I'm even comparing a Jeep to the Raptor. That's pretty interesting. All right, so one other thing I wanted to mention, a lot of you might know that uh, you know I'm gearing up to drive cross country with my beautiful girlfriend in a couple months. Uh, we're gonna drive from Philadelphia down to Atlanta, Georgia, uh, from Atlanta, Georgia to Colorado, Colorado, maybe up through like Montana, Portland, we're not really sure, and then down the West Coast, probably the PCH. So I'm super excited about that. Um, a, lot of th a lot of the thoughts going through my head when I review vehicles lately are, would this vehicle be good for that trip? Because I need to buy one. I'm, I lived in New York and now I don't have a car. So I'm like, I gotta find something to, I gotta find something to drive around. Um, so I will say that like this car is definitely, I'm considering it more than I thought I'd be considering the Jeep for that trip because of the suspension and the comfort of the interior. Um, I think it's probably not gonna be my pick because of like storage space and things like that. But again, it's not bad. It really, like I think I could do it. Uh, and I think it would be a great like daily driver for most of the things that I'm doing. But I think going cross country, I'm gonna want a little bit more room in the back and the bed. Uh, but we'll see, I'm not really sure. Another thing is like, in that, in that same vein of usability, uh, you know, I've been, I've been basically converting this into my workspace for the day. And I can got, I gotta say that like, it's not too bad in terms of grabbing things out of the back seat. I'm about to change lenses with my camera. This is my Sony uh, 50 mil Zeiss. Love this lens. Um, but I'm about to put it on the camera, do some slow-mo B-roll for you guys. I had to grab it out of the back seat. Pretty easy, not too bad. Just wanted to call that out. But all right, let's get into some crispy B-roll.
is, guys, can I vlog with this 50 mil? I think I can. Uh, we just had the Jeep Gladiator back here in some of those rough, uh, rough rocks back there. And I gotta tell you, it did a killer job, man. This suspension is awesome. It's super, super compliant, bounces the way you want it to, gives you a lot of good feedback. Um, I would love to take this thing rock prong. I think it'd be a blast. This is a really, really fun car. All right, so <clears throat> we're still driving around in the Jeep. I had to stop a while while I was getting hungry. I had to take a quick lunch break uh right quick but then i went into wawa and came back out and there was people looking at the mojave it was pretty sweet um i walked up and like is this your truck and i was like no but i'm reviewing it for youtube and uh there were like a bunch of people thought it was super cool and they were looking at it without me even around so that's pretty neat you definitely get wow factor with this car uh people definitely think it's a neat looking uh neat looking car and they ask a bunch of questions about it so just keep that in mind if you're looking for something that does have a little bit of a different wow factor on the road i would say this does capture that kind of like a raptor does which when you're spending, you know, 60 grand or something, it's pretty cool to have, I, I gotta say. Um, all right, so let's get out of Wawa. And for those of y'all watching down south that don't know what Wawa is, I feel I feel real bad for you guys that you don't have Wawa down there. I know you guys have Zaxby's and things like that. I know Zaxby's is good. My girlfriend likes to tell me how Zaxby's is better than Chick-fil-A all the time. TBD on that, I don't know, we'll see. I've tried it, it's pretty good, but I don't know. Chick-fil-A has kind of got a special place in my heart. Let's navigate back to D'Ambrosio. My girl's gonna get mad at me when she sees that. Don't tell her I said that. She's a big Zaxby's fan, and I'm screwed now. But uh, let's keep driving this bad boy around. Let's see if we can find anything else cool to get into while we're out driving it. Um, but it's uh, it's really awesome. I gotta say, spending the day with this vehicle has been really pleasurable, man. I mean, it's a really cool car. I, I really like everything about it. I, if it was a little bit bigger, <laughs> there's a groundhog on the side of the road. Watch out, buddy. Um, if it was a little bit bigger, I feel like I might buy one. I'm like half thinking about it anyway because I need a car and this thing is actually like really sick. So I don't, I don't know. I got a problem. I just love all cars. Every, every car I get into, my mom was saying this this morning, every car I sit in, I'm like, yeah, I love this. Cause like, honestly, cars are so good today and car manufacturers, they spend so much time making these cars awesome and they are all pretty awesome. Like, yeah, you can nitpick. But there's a lot of great things about every new car at the top trim these days. Um, and this is just an example of that, where Jeep has just really made a good vehicle uh, in terms of looks, suspension, reliability. Uh, price is pretty good. Like it's, I think this is like 50, 55K, fully spec'd out. It's good, man. You gotta you got like that. I really can't complain. But all right, let's navigate back to the dealership. Um, when it comes down to it, guys, I would recommend buying one. If you're thinking about it, if you're on the fence with this Mojave, I would totally, totally, oh, this isn't my turn. I would totally recommend buying a Mojave if you're thinking about it. If you're between this and a Rubicon, I would ask you, are you gonna rock crawl? You know, because the only difference is the front locker. But other than that, man, it's a really comfortable ride. The steering wheel, the seating position's good. Um, I could totally, totally ride this, this truck around all the time and daily drive it. It's sweet, man. I, I really don't have complaints about it. Um, and again, I'm just, I'm very, very pleasantly surprised every second by the suspension so really really cool there um but yeah i'm actually going later today to look at a toyota tundra and i'm going to potentially buy this tundra i'm really not sure but i'm going to go check it out and test drive it one more time uh, but it'll be interesting to see how that feels after the mojave i'm really interested to see what i think about the toyota fox suspension after dry riding in the mojave fox suspension but again this suspension is one of my favorite suspensions i think that i've ever driven uh it's really really comfortable probably one of the best out there and I told you last night I drove a Raptor literally last night and I think that this suspension is just as good it's a little bit different but I still think it's it's just as good hang on to my camera amateur youtuber style here making a turn this Jeep's got some really interesting things that happen in turns I don't know if it's like cutting power to wheels or like helping me balance but it definitely feels like it has some assistance going on which is interesting um, and it's just really planted it feels like a good car man I'm, I'm really not um, I've been driving it all day. It's been pretty, it's felt like it's gonna not, you know, pretty reliable. Everything has all the buttons and all the latches and stuff feel good. Um, and again, these bumps, man, I feel like I could jump this thing doing 60 miles an hour in the desert. Like, I feel like I could really just like launch this thing and it would take care of you in the air on the way down. I mean, it's, it's pretty sweet. So I don't know, man, it's got this really, really cool aspect about it that I'm just like, not sure if I'm gonna be able to not buy it, you know what I mean? It's like one of those things. It's like, I, I don't know that I wanna buy it, but I might have to buy it. I don't know. 
All right, guys, well, that's it for me. Again, in the 2020 Jeep Mojave. Awesome car if you're thinking about buying it. Um, again, my name is John Monroe. This is my YouTube channel. I do car and truck reviews. If you like this video, please like and subscribe to the channel. Share the video with your friends. Um, and drop any comments down below. Let me know what you would like to see. And again, if you're looking for a Chrysler vehicle, Chrysler Dodge Jeep or Ram vehicle in the Tri-County or Philadelphia area, definitely be sure to hit up Jeff D'Ambrosio. They're really good people at that dealership and they have a lot of inventory, so definitely check them out if you have the opportunity to. Um, but that's all I got for you guys today. Tune in and subscribe for the next video, and I'll talk to you in the next one. Peace.